we are glad to have you back on the God's Light channel. Representing a life of charity, altruism, and virtue, Mother Teresa devoted her entire life to God and to the poor. You know, righteous faith will always be undermined by the powers of Satan. He makes people doubt God's witnesses. That is the reason why many people doubt whether Mother Teresa was truly perfect, chaste, and flawless, as we know. Things about her were only revealed after her death, and it shocked the whole world. The embodiment of compassionate, the Nobel Peace Prize was accepted in 1979, was the world's way of thanking Mother Teresa for her unwavering dedication to the destitute and the needy. At that moment, she delivered an inspiring speech to the world. She eloquently discussed her journey to find peace through service to the world's poor and downtrodden. She also articulated her lifelong commitment to advocating for peace, promoting mutual care, and nurturing spirituality. She declined the monetary reward associated with the prize, instead directing it toward impoverished Indians' welfare. She also convinced the Nobel Committee to allocate funds, meant for a celebratory banquet to feed the needy. Mother Teresa's mission wasn't confined by geography or age. Even in her 80s, she actively supported the destitute in Calcutta, India, and raised funds globally. Mother Teresa dedicated her entire life to serving those in need. From the streets of Calcutta to poverty-stricken communities around the world, Mother Teresa brought hope and love to countless individuals. She preached compassion and shed light on societal ills, such as abortion and drug addiction, while bringing to all humans a beacon of hope and joy. With a heart full of empathy, Mother Teresa approached each person she encountered as a beloved child of God, whether it was providing food for the hungry, shelter for the homeless, or medical care for the sick. Her work extended beyond material assistance. Mother Teresa recognized that true poverty went beyond just physical needs. It encompassed loneliness, abandonment, and spiritual emptiness. She sought not only to alleviate suffering, but also to offer solace and companionship through her presence. In her interactions with those living in extreme poverty, Mother Teresa displayed incredible humility and respect. She treated everyone equally, regardless of their background or circumstances. This unwavering commitment to treating all individuals with love and compassion became one of her defining principles. Holiness and charity are what people said about Mother Teresa throughout her life. But if people thought that they knew the whole truth about Mother Teresa, they were wrong. The dark night of the soul, the inner struggle of this holy woman beneath this facade of serenity, was a massive spiritual turmoil that Mother Teresa had been feeling for more than 50 years, following her initial visions and locutions. Mother Teresa was wrapped in a dark, pitiless silence. She only once more heard the voice of God, and she believed the doors of heaven had been closed and bolted against her. The more she longed for some sign of his presence, the more empty and desolate she became, people always saw her smiling. She had a playful smile, mischievous, as if privy to some secret joke, especially when she was around children. She beamed with delight in private. She had a quick, dark, self-deprecating sense of humor, and sometimes doubled over from laughing so hard. So many people who spent time with her came away saying that she was the most joyful person they had ever met. But no one knows the dark is covering her soul. In a private letter to Reverend Michael Van Der Peek, which came to light very recently, we know that in secret, her life was a living hell. In the darkness, Lord my God, who am I that you should forsake me, the child of your love, and now become as the most hated one, the one you have thrown away as unwanted, unloved? I call, I cling, I want, and there is no one to answer. Where I try to raise my thoughts to heaven, there is such convicting emptiness that those very thoughts return like sharp knives and hurt my very soul. Love, the word, it brings nothing. I am told God lives in me, and yet the reality of darkness and coldness and emptiness is so great that nothing touches my soul. Mother Teresa lived in a spiritual desert, panicked that God had rejected her. Or worse, that he was there in the dark hiding from her. As if by some strange formula, the greater her success in public adulation, the more abandoned, humiliated, and desperate she felt. There was a brief period, one month in 1958, when she was able to pierce the darkness. Her light came during a requiem mass celebrated the day after the death of her husband, of Pope Pius E. Isle, the Pope, who had granted her permission to leave Loretto and go among the poor, she wrote there and then disappeared. That long darkness, that pain of loss, of loneliness, of that strange suffering of ten years. Today my soul is filled with love, with joy untold with an unbroken union of love. But four weeks later, the darkness had descended. He is gone again, leaving me alone. She lived in this darkness until the end of her life. Other saints have told of their spiritual torments and feelings of abandonment by God. In the 16th century saint, John of the Cross described the experience as the dark night of the soul. 
but we would be hard-pressed to find another saint who suffered a darkness so thick, or a night so long as Mother Teresa suffered. Never before, perhaps, in the history of the saints have we been given such an honest and plain-spoken account of the dark night of a soul. In Mother Teresa's dark night we can hear all the anguish of her century, the desolation of the poor, the cries of the unwanted children, of the atheist and of all those who can't murmur a prayer or feel to love any more. It was as if in some way she was bearing their sufferings, and in this she seemed in some way to be sharing too, in the sufferings of Christ. She experienced these graces immediately, or almost immediately, before beginning her work in the slums for the poorest of the poor. Jesus was asking her directly, and in a most vivid way, to change her life utterly and asking her also to establish a new religious society or community of nuns. I want Indian nuns, missionaries of charity, who would be my fire of love amongst the poor, the sick, the dying, and the little children. At that time the year was 1946, Mother Teresa wrote, In all my prayers and holy communions, he is continually asking, Will you refuse? Alarmed at the thought of what was being asked of her, and conscious of her own littleness and weakness, Mother Teresa replied, My own Jesus, what you ask is beyond me. I can hardly understand half of the things you want. I am unworthy. I am sinful. I am weak. But by way of response to these words, at some point later in the interchange between them, she hears Jesus saying to her, You are, I know, the most incapable person, weak and sinful, but just because you are that, I want to use you for my glory. Will you refuse? And again, fear not. It is I who am asking you to do this for me. Fear not. Even if the whole world is against you, laughs at you, your companions and superiors look down on you, fear not. It is I in you with you for you. Furthermore, she wrote in 1974, to a priest suffering his own spiritual blackness, in you today, he wants to relive his complete submission to his father. It does not matter what you feel, but what he feels in you. You and I must let him live in us and through us in the world. We now see these words as beautifully autobiographical, reflecting her awareness that in her emptiness and poverty, she was being mystically grafted onto the life of Christ, being emptied as he was in assuming our humanity and being crucified as he was in offering himself for our sins. After her death, it was disclosed that in her early missionary days, long before hearing her call to the poor, Mother Teresa had quietly made a private vow of spiritual espousal to be all for Jesus, and to refuse him nothing. From her letters, we can see that she understood her darkness as an ordeal, a divine trial. In the dark night, her vow of self-offering was being put to the test. Would she really refuse him nothing, drink the cup her Lord drank, lay down her life as he had laid down his life, offer herself as he did, completely and without reserve? In her dark night, Jesus was claiming Mother Teresa for his own, pledging himself to his spiritual bride, pruning away her self-love and pride, purifying her in heart, mind, and intention, stripping away all that would keep her from total union with him. She died almost 100 years to the day after her patron there's the little flower of Lisieux. There's too, experienced a night of nothingness. On her deathbed, she heard demonic voices telling her that heaven was just a figment of her imagination. Following the wreaths into this night of nothingness, Mother Teresa, too, sought the holy face of the crucified and the crushed and the dying, walked the path of spiritual childhood in the small, ordinary realities of her days, and lived her life one little act of love at a time. On the day Mother Teresa died, her sisters laid her in state beneath Our Lady of Fatima, a statue of the Blessed Mother depicted as she appeared to the children at Fatima. It was fitting in a way that no one could have known at the time. Few knew that she had been guided all these years by apparitions, and a voice heard one summer long ago, and few knew that she was of the world to Mary's love for her children, to show us the blessed fruit of Mary's womb, Jesus. We can now see that Mother Teresa was among the first fruits of the Pope's consecration of the world to Mary's immaculate heart. The child called Gongsha, flower bud, was born, became the first bud of new Christian life, flowering from the centuries' bloody soil of wars, famines, and persecutions. We all have to admit that, if we were not a mother, it would be difficult for anyone to live such a complete life. She endured the torment and pain, and she fought the fight till the end. Excellent saint, Francis of Assisi felt that way, and saint, Bernadette of Lourdes, and saint, Teresa of the Little Flower, and probably so many more. It is a relatively common experience among very religious people as we know. The Dark Night of a Soul The Dark Night of a Soul is one of the hardest crosses every Christian will have to experience not just saints but ourselves. All must carry their cross and follow the Lord. Given the reality of her own interior anguish, it clearly took a huge effort on the part of Mother Teresa to keep her hope and her courage alive every day and to keep smiling. But what a devastating experience to have to bear, 
day after day, the apparent split or contradiction between her smiling exterior self on the one hand and on the other. Her inner heart's deep unhappiness. Mother Teresa did, as we know, continue to suffer intensely her dark night until the very end. But her attitude to the experience underwent, in time, a significant change. Gradually she came to regard the darkness not only as a share in Christ's passion, but also, in some sense, as the spiritual side of her apostolate. Um, she wrote, I have come to love the darkness, for I believe now that it is a part, a very, very small part of Jesus' darkness and pain on earth. And to her friend, Bishop William Curlin, at their last meeting in 1995, she remarked and repeated several times, what a wonderful gift from God to be able to offer him the emptiness I feel. I am so happy to give him this gift. For Mother Teresa, the gift was wonderful, first of all because it underlined her intimate communion with God, but also because she realized that her experience of the dark night, her feeling of being unloved and unwanted, could help in some way to unite her more closely with the poorest of the poor. She wrote, Let him do with me whatever he wants. If my darkness is light to some soul, I am perfectly happy. And again, the physical situation of my poor left in the streets unwanted, unloved, unclaimed, are the true picture of my own spiritual life. Bless poor, innocent, defenseless Mother Teresa. She was innocent and very tired and she was asking for help. Everyone in us feels so sad for her that she was ignored by the people who thought that she was not doing her work to her best ability. She worked very, very hard, and at times must have felt very vulnerable herself. God bless her. She is now in safe hands and she has gone on her journey to our Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord God will care for her in the Holy Land. God bless you, Mother Teresa, and may Mother now rest in peace and happiness and be known that her wonderful work will always be appreciated and respected and remembered. Canization Born on, on August 26, 1910, in Skopje, now part of North Macedonia, Mother Teresa was the youngest of three children in a devoutly Catholic Albanian family. From an early age she displayed a deep sense of compassion and a desire to help those less fortunate. At the tender age of twelve Mother Teresa experienced her calling during a pilgrimage to Lourdes with her mother. It was there that she felt an intense connection to God and knew that her purpose in life would be devoted to serving others. In 1928, at the age of eighteen, she left home to join the Sisters of Loretto in Ireland. After completing her training as a nun, she traveled to India, where she spent nearly two decades teaching at St. Mary's High School in Kolkata, formerly Calcutta. That's why we call her Mother Teresa of Calcutta. During this time, Mother Teresa witnessed firsthand the extreme poverty and suffering faced by many people living on the streets. This experience profoundly affected her and ignited within her an unyielding determination to alleviate their pain. Mother Teresa's early life laid the foundation for what would become a lifetime dedicated to selfless service. Her upbringing nurtured qualities such as empathy, kindness, and an unwavering faith that shaped every aspect of her extraordinary journey ahead. Mother Teresa's journey of compassion and service to humanity did not end with her passing. In fact, it was just the beginning of a new chapter in her remarkable legacy. After years of devotion and selflessness, Mother Teresa's extraordinary life led to her canonization as a saint by the Catholic Church. The process of canonization is rigorous and thorough, ensuring that only those who have lived lives of exceptional virtue are recognized as saints. For Mother Teresa, this involved an extensive investigation into her life, writings, and works. Her miracles were also examined to confirm their authenticity. On September 4, 2016, in front of thousands gathered at St. Peter's Square in Vatican City, Pope Francis declared Mother Teresa a saint during a solemn Mass. This momentous event affirmed what millions around the world already knew, that Mother Teresa's tireless efforts had touched countless lives and inspired generations to follow in her footsteps, the canonization ceremony was filled with joy and reverence as people from different walks of life came together to celebrate this extraordinary woman who dedicated herself entirely to serving the poorest of the poor. The title saint bestowed upon Mother Teresa serves not only as recognition for her incredible work, but also as an inspiration for all humanity. Mother Teresa's canonization has left an indelible mark on history. She continues to be revered worldwide for embodying love, compassion, and selflessness. Her example challenges us all to examine our own lives and find ways we can make a difference in the lives of others. Mother Teresa's legacy, Mother Teresa's death in 1997, marked the end of a remarkable life dedicated to serving others. Her passing was mourned by people around the world, from the poorest of the poor she had helped to heads of state. But while her physical presence may have departed, her legacy lives on. 
Mother Teresa's impact on humanity cannot be overstated. Through her tireless work with the poor and marginalized, she inspired countless individuals to follow in her footsteps and devote their lives to helping those in need. One of the greatest achievements during her life was founding the Missionaries of Charity. Inspired by a divine call, she gathered a small group of dedicated individuals who shared her vision to uplift the lives of the poorest and most vulnerable, and most neglected members of society with unwavering determination. Mother Teresa established her first mission in Kolkata, India. In 1950, the Missionaries of Charity provided care, love, and support for those living on the streets, abandoned children, lepers, and people dying from diseases like HIV-AIDS. This selfless act ignited a spark that would eventually spread across continents. As word spread about their remarkable work, more volunteers joined Mother Teresa's cause. They opened missions around the world from Africa to Europe to South America, offering assistance to those in need. Each mission became a beacon of hope for countless individuals who had been left behind by society. The missionaries of charity adhered to Mother Teresa's philosophy that love begins at home. They believed that every person deserved dignity and respect. Regardless of their circumstances or background, their compassionate approach transformed lives as they provided shelter, food, healthcare services, and education opportunities for thousands. Mother Teresa's leadership was characterized by humility and an unyielding commitment towards helping others. She encouraged her sisters as she referred to her fellow nuns, not only to serve but also to live among those they helped. By doing so, the sisters experienced firsthand the struggles faced by these marginalized communities. Through sheer dedication, Mother Teresa nurtured an organization rooted in love, benevolence, and compassion. Every day, she reminded herself and others that true joy comes from giving selflessly. Within decades, the missionaries of charity grew into a global entity that touching the lives of millions across different cultures and religions. Opening homes for the dying is Mother's next achievement that needs to be honored. Recognizing the dire conditions faced by those nearing the end of their lives, Mother Teresa opened the first home for the dying, also known as Nirmal Friday in Kolkata. This facility offered a peaceful and caring environment for the terminally ill, ensuring they receive love, dignity, and compassion in their final days, then is opening homes for abandoned children. Mother Teresa's deep love for children led her to create homes for abandoned infants and children. These homes provided shelter, nourishment, medical care, and a nurturing environment where each child received love. In education, ensuring they had a chance at a brighter future. Mother Teresa was deeply concerned for the needs of the ill, particularly those battling leprosy. They not only endured a debilitating disease, but also the stigma the disease has carried throughout history. That's why she, establishing Shantinagar, city of Pisa, she also initiating the Gift of Peace Hospice. In 1986, Mother Teresa opened the Gift of Peace AIDS Hospice in Washington, D.C., a facility that extended her compassionate care to the terminally ill in the United States. The hospice offered comfort, dignity, and support to those facing the end of their lives as a result of AIDS and other diseases. Promoting interfaith harmony is her next legacy. Mother Teresa believed in fostering unity among people of different faiths. She promoted interfaith dialogue and harmony, emphasizing that compassion transcends religious boundaries. Her efforts aimed to bridge divides and bring people together in the pursuit of peace and love. Her message of compassion and love resonates still, reminding us that every person has inherent worth and deserves dignity and respect. Mother Teresa showed us that we can make a difference, no matter how small our actions may seem. In addition to inspiring others through her example, Mother Teresa's legacy includes numerous awards and honors bestowed upon her during her lifetime. Um, she received the Nobel Peace Prize in 1979 for her humanitarian efforts and was canonized as a saint by Pope Francis in 2016. Mother Teresa's legacy lives on through organizations such as Missionaries of Charity, which she founded, continues its work today across more than 130 countries. The impact she made during her lifetime cannot be measured solely by numbers or statistics, but rather by the transformed lives she touched along the way. Even after her death, Mother Teresa remains an icon of selflessness and service. Her simple yet profound teachings continue to touch hearts and inspire change worldwide. She reminds us all that we have within us the power to bring about positive change, one act of kindness. At a time, Mother Teresa's impact will endure for generations to come as people strive to carry forward her mission of compassion towards all humankind. In her later years, Mother Teresa continued to devote herself wholeheartedly to serving the poor and marginalized. Despite facing health challenges, she remained resolute in her mission of compassion and love. As she grew older, Mother Teresa's reputation as a selfless humanitarian grew, spread far and wide. 
people from all walks of life sought her counsel and guidance. She became a symbol of hope for those who felt forgotten or neglected by society, even though she received numerous awards and accolades throughout her life. Mother Teresa remained humble and focused on her calling. She never sought recognition or fame, but rather saw every individual as deserving of dignity and respect. Mother Teresa's later years were marked by tireless work, often spending long hours visiting hospitals, orphanages, and slums. Her unwavering commitment to the poorest of the poor inspired countless others to join her cause. Throughout it all, Mother Teresa never lost sight of her ultimate goal, to bring joy and comfort to those who suffered most. Her unwavering faith served as an anchor during times of doubt or hardship. She was our mother, coming to us in the dark night of our times, to give us comfort and prove to us that we had not been orphaned by God. She taught us to call on our Father in all our desolations and diminishments, to cry out as she did, as children of His love, born of His desire, never out of His care, destined to love and be loved. She was an apostle sent to us in our time of dying, to a culture in which death had become the last refuge of the living. Hers was a ministry of final moments and last chances. She believed in deathbed conversions, that we were never too old to learn the lessons of spiritual childhood, that on this side of death it was never too late for any of us or for the world. Uh, Mother Teresa was wonderful. She took up her cross every day, regardless of how she felt and chose to emanate the Savior. Who wouldn't feel spiritually desolate, witnessing all of the suffering she saw? Her story is one of overcoming such feelings and choosing to do the right thing anyway. What a beautiful soul she was and Anne is. The very fact that she struggled throughout her life with spiritual dryness and doubt only enhances her achievements. There's not a human who ever lived concandescent or spree inferences upon her. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And so may she rest forever in God's love.